With so many different types of personal and business tax systems around the world, from tax-free to territorial to exception tax systems, non-DOM, and many others, it's easy to understand why people have a hard time understanding what they need to do to personally reduce their taxes and for their business to reduce their taxes. So today, I'm going to introduce you to what I call the tax-friendly quadrant. I'm Andrew Henderson here at Nomad Capitalist, our team of 30 people all around the world, plus our network of experts that I've met over years of traveling all around the world, help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs legally go where they're treated best. And to help you understand the tax savings component of go where you're treated best, to help you understand how you can essentially choose your own tax rate, whether that's zero, one, five, 10% that goes with the lifestyle you want, I want to talk about my tax-friendly quadrant. This is something that I came up with. You could also call it the tax-free quadrant in some cases, but it explains the four core elements that you need to check the box on in order to legally reduce your taxes. Because to this day, people still comment. They still come to us and they think that if they stay in the United States, stay in Australia, they can simply form a tax-free company. And as long as you know, they're going and doing a board meeting in that country once a year. They don't have to pay any tax. It's not that simple. So let's look at it as, uh, you know, two uh, different sides of the equation and two different, you know, top and bottom, two left and right. So it is a, a quadrant, four boxes and a square. And so on the left side, uh, you're going to have what I call the personal side. So this is you as an individual, because you as an individual dictate where you pay tax. And so on the top, you're going to have where are you leaving? Remember, we're talking about four different boxes here. On the top is where are you leaving? So if you live in the United States, if you live in Canada, if you live in the UK, if you live in Egypt, wherever you live, what is it that it takes for you to leave that country? Now, for Americans and perhaps for other countries in the future, you are not able to leave the tax system. You are merely able to go overseas and qualify for exclusions, for reductions, for exemptions, for credits, etc. So as an American, you're always going to be a U.S. taxpayer. It's just a matter of how do you legally reduce it as much as possible, whether it's to 0%, 4%, 10%, somewhere in that ballpark. It depends on how much you make. For everyone else, how do you leave your country's tax system? How do you do that legally? Some countries say, if you move to a tax haven, you have to continue paying our taxes for three years. Some countries say no matter where you move, you have to keep paying for three years unless you've got a good reason. Other countries uh, have other provisions. So how do you get out as an individual from your country's tax system? If you're going to be the owner of your business, that's important. Now, what's also important is below that, where are you arriving? Okay. And so sometimes I had a, had a, a family not so recently, uh, not so well long ago. Uh, they said, you know, we'd love to live in France. I said, that's great, but you're not going to lower your taxes living in France. You can visit France as a tourist. Maybe if we do some planning, you can have a second home there, but I'm, I'm, I feel like you're going to be tempted to spend too much time. Uh, but, you know, you have to go to a place that's tax friendly. Now, I call it the tax, I originally called it the tax free quadrant because, you know, how do you live tax free? Well, you have to follow and you check all these four boxes. There are tax-free countries. You can move to the UAE. You can move personally to Vanuatu or Monaco or any number of other countries that just have no taxes. However, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are other tax systems where territorial, for example, with proper planning, you're not sending money to the country, your company's incorporated elsewhere, maybe your employees are elsewhere, uh, that could be a tax-free system even though the country itself isn't tax-free. There are other systems. Some countries offer you know, five-year seven-year, ten-year tax exemption. So that wouldn't be a permanent place to live, but if you were to live there, you could be exempt. Some countries have blacklists, and so we'll talk about that in a second, where if you move to Portugal, for example, there are certain places where you can't incorporate your company if you want it to be, uh, fall under their, their tax exemption for ten years. Other countries have lump sum taxation. Switzerland is well known for this. Italy has a program. You pay them one flat lump sum. You can do whatever you want with the rest of your money. Okay, so where are you as an individual leaving and where are you arriving for tax purposes? Those definitions are sometimes more complicated because it's not just the 183-day test that people talk about. Many countries, particularly developed countries, have more than one test. Australia, we look at four or more different tests. Other countries, it might be three different tests. And so the day's test might just be one of those. Okay, so you have to understand that Generally, if you are spending six months in a country and making that your home, that might be enough to be a tax 
residents. Uh, and so that could be where you're arriving. If it's a tax-friendly country, that's a good thing. And that can certainly help with where you're leaving, but it doesn't do the entire job all the time. So you have to figure out where you're leaving, where you're arriving. There's more complications, but that gives you an overview. Now, let's talk about your business, your corporate structure. A lot of businesses that I'll work with will have more than one part to their corporate structure because one individual corporate entity will not serve all of their needs, particularly if you're doing things like processing payments uh, with the credit cards, particularly if you have customers who like to pay to a certain type of account, you might need a multi-part structure. But the core operating component of your structure uh, should be uh, determined. Where is that leaving and where is it arriving? Same criteria, but now we're talking about your business. So let's say you live in Canada and you have a Canadian corporation. You've been doing business there. How do you leave Canada? Well, is it a matter of simply shutting down your corporation and moving overseas? Well, maybe, but are you gonna to have to deal with an exit tax when you transfer those assets overseas? Are there tangible assets? Is there IP that needs to be sold? Uh, how is that gonna be handled? It's a question that no video can go into. Every country has their own procedures. You know, fortunately, a lot of entrepreneurs who do business online or who are just starting out, they don't have a lot to sell, and so that part's relatively easy, but you do need to close down your company uh, where you are living. Sometimes that's a criteria for you to actually personally leave. And then you need to figure out where you are moving that company, right? And so this is the part that people most focus on. I'll set up a Seychelles company, a British Virgin Islands company, a Belize company, God help me. And that's all I'll do. But you're missing, well, you're moving your company out. What are the procedures to move your company out? If that company has lots of assets, if that company has lots of business, do you need to go through a more formal procedure with you know, tax advisors to actually move that company properly so you don't get a knock on the door later. But now, where do you want to set up your new structure? We've talked about the death of tax havens. I think there are some uh, zero tax jurisdictions with very few requirements that are still worth considering, but I've talked about how Belize, Seychelles, those jurisdictions, they may work for special purpose vehicles in some cases. They don't often work for operating companies, for uh, people who are running active businesses, particularly online businesses. So you're going to look at uh, onshore is the new offshore. Are you looking at places like Hong Kong, UAE, Barbados, etc., uh, as well as some of the traditional offshore havens? Where are you going to be incorporating your company and what needs does that company uh, serve? Do we need additional parts of the structure? Okay. And so where the company arrives is important, but it's important that it arrives in a way that's compliant with whatever it is that the company is leaving. Anyone can set up an offshore company. When you go online and you see, you know, Belize Company, $489, that's great. Uh, I went through that process once myself just for fun. We made a video how I set up a cheap offshore company. It was some of the worst customer service that I've ever received. And I think people who are getting into the offshore industry expect excellent customer service. Most people don't have it. We try and reply to every single email uh, that comes to us at help at nomadcapitalist.com. And I guess there are still some people who aren't satisfied. So this is an industry where you're dealing with a lot of people generally on islands uh, and in places that uh, they're not as responsive. And so I had a bad experience doing that on top of the fact that that mere little $489 company or whatever it is does not solve any problems because it doesn't speak to the other three parts of the quadrant. Everyone in the business wants to sell you that shiny object that is the, the silver bullet, the panacea, but no one's really talking about those other three parts of the equation. That's the tax-friendly quadrant. And until you can say with certainty you've checked off all of those four boxes, then your tax-free plan of moving overseas probably isn't developed enough yet. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.